we know that in the crushing, there can be pain, there can be transforming power that happens in our lives. We know that in the crushing, it's not always a pleasant place, but it is a place of purpose. And it is a place of peace and power. And I pray right now in every one of our lives that you would help us to surrender our old flame for your new fire. That you would pour out your spirit upon your house, upon your family. And that that spirit would be such a refreshing mood of love and grace, of understanding that you, God, to be glorified in everything that we do and everything that we say. Grant us this. Pour out your <clears throat> presence on your word today. May we be able to celebrate the goodness of your hope that springs eternal words in your name we pray this. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Look around at somebody and tell them you're glad to be in God's house with us. If you are, aren't you? Hope you are. I am. I am definitely. Thank you for your prayers and help and all the ways you have ministered to <coughs> me this week. <coughs> Pastor Don Sauls and I had something in common we didn't know about. We both preached last Sunday, didn't know we had been exposed to COVID. I, I dealt with it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and so uh, uh, everything seems to be back in order for me. Tracy now has it, but it's her second time through it, and it's not as bad as it had been the first time, but thank you for your prayers, and you know, those of you who were able to reach out, others around in our church family. Hey, it's just, it's, it's life, right? Uh, it's, whether it's going to be that, or the flu, or stumping your toe in the middle of the night. One of the, it's going to always be there, right? So, uh, but I'm uh, glad to see you here today. Listen, I need your help. Um, I was very upset when I read <clears throat> that because I had COVID, I now had to cancel my blood appointment. And I've given blood for I don't know how many years. Uh, not just here, but in, in previous places that never had to cancel it. And of course, I tell you, you had to cancel it. And, you know, and I give double. So, I, you know, they really want my blood, that O negative blood. And, and, uh, and they're really upset that I canceled my appointment. So here's what I need from you. I need at least 10 of you to sign up and take my place. <laughs> okay? So, uh, if at least 10 of you will sign up to take my place to give blood, I'll be okay. All right? But uh, it's this Wednesday. Uh, if you haven't, we, you know, it's, we're in pretty tough situations uh, in the blood bank and other things, dealing with it. And so uh, they're really low. So if you can in any, in any way, uh, sign up, go online, it's in your bulletin, very easy to sign up, uh, or you can contact the church office and we'll sign you up. Uh, this coming Wednesday, there's no other activities but the blood drive and the fellowship hall. So do me that favor and cover my uh, uh, spot. You give blood if it's all possible. You've never given blood, let it be your first time. It's always the first time. <coughs> I promise you it's not as bad as you think, but um, I hope you will plan to do that. Our word for 2022 is hope. Hey. And I did a four-week series uh, back in mid-January through mid-February. The Lord kind of, I, I begin to pray in October and November a lot of times, God, is there something particular? you want for us as a church family to focus on in, in the coming year. And, and generally, he's given me a word about it. And this year, the word was hope. And so I did this four-week series explaining the reasons for this being our Holy Spirit-given word for this year. 
And, and, one, and some of the things I wanted you to remember, and I did it back then, and I want to come back to you today, the title of my message today is Celebrating Hope. I got some things to share with you that I want us to be able to celebrate. But one of the things, every time the Lord gives me a word, one of the things that we have to do is we have to understand that He gave us this word and that for the year, that means it is of our utmost focus. You need to be focused on hope this year. You need to be there needs to be an intentionality about you and the hope that we have in Christ. There needs to be an awareness. You should be acutely aware every day. I try to be every day. God gave me this word, not for a sermon, not for January, February, but for all year. If you gave this word of all the words there are, if you gave this word to me and to us, for the year, then we don't need to just forget about it and blindly walk around and wonder about it. We need to be intentional. We need to be very alert and have an awareness of the hope. The hope of what God is doing. We need to be able to learn from that word hope throughout our year, God. We need to be able to live out that hope throughout our year. In other words, it's our watchword. What do you mean, Pastor? In other words, watch God bring the relevance and truth of this word into our presence this year. Anybody here willing to raise a hand and say, yeah, I've seen God bring the relevance and the truth of the word hope to bear on my life, my circumstances, or our surroundings this year. Anybody? <clears throat> Amen. God is in the business of hope. He's in the business of not only bringing hope to us from the point of Christ, but bringing hope into our very situations, into our very circumstances. Moving in our lives. Now, hope, according to the Bible, hope is not a guarantee against struggle. Hope is not a guarantee against tragedy or trials. Hope is not a guarantee to isolate you from those things. Hope, according to the Bible, is the guarantee that He is present, He is there, He is working, even when you can't see. Sometimes His working takes 50 years. Sometimes His work takes 50 minutes. But irregardless, He is working. That's what biblical hope is <clears throat> it's a focus it's an awareness it's a learning from it's a living out so I tell you it's your it's our watch word watch God bring the relevance and truth of that word hope into our presence this year. And so here we are. End of June. And we're entering in the second half of 2022. And if you just watch the news. And you just look around. You see that the next part of 2022. Promises to be fertile ground. For the relevance and the truth of the hope of the sovereign God of all this creation. He is at work. And <clears throat> while we can look out there and see that, I want to share with you.
some things. I want us to take stock in how God has been faithful to bring the power and the presence and his provision of the word hope into our lives individually and into our lives as a faith community in this area. Now last week, I am so happy to see y'all back. Because last week I challenged you. Anybody remember? And I really wondered if there'd be anybody here. <coughs> Especially the comments I got after the service. I had quite a few comments of people who said, Pastor, you should have told us that it was a steel toe shoe Sunday. I even had a couple of them tell me, Pastor, if you'd just called and told me what you were going to preach on, I wouldn't have come. <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> Jokingly. But last week I challenged us. I challenged us with a burden that I have been having for a long time about this eternal hope becoming more of a priority in our daily commitments to our church, to the gospel, to our daily faith. So last week I challenged you, and I know it was like eating broccoli without cheese. I know it was a lot for some of you to take, but today, we're going to celebrate. Challenge you last week. We're going to celebrate this week. This week you get your cheese with your broccoli. All right? If you don't like broccoli, then just go try broccoli flavored ice cream. <laughs> it's easy like that. I don't know about broccoli, but I think there is sweet potato flavored ice cream right now. So you can try that out. Let me read for you our text this morning. This is the Word. This is the Scripture. Surviving thousands of years. That God said, hey, share this from my love journal to my people today. Thousands of years old. This is for you. We always thank God for all of you mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to do a quick word study. <coughs> As you can see, these words are bold and underlined. I, it wasn't in the Bible I did that because I wanted to highlight these words for you. I want you and I to understand the context of those underlined words. So as we read them in English, we can kind of have an idea of what they mean. But I want to give you, when the writer wrote this, if you're reading it in your Bible, you're reading it in English probably. But if you were reading the words written in its original language, they would, they would give you a broader context, a deeper understanding of what those words mean. And so I want to give you that this morning before I share with you some things that we're celebrating in this church family. That first word underlined their work. You and I know what work is, but here's what I understood when I began to read the scriptures and, and go to its original meanings and find out. And I found out this very interesting definition of it is that is when he wrote that word their work, it wasn't work done by your natural abilities or by your job responsibility. Look at it. It was work done but by 
faith. So wait a minute. This isn't a physical work? Not totally. So when he writes that uh, verse there, and he says, we, we remember our God and Father for your work produced by faith. He's saying that there are some things that have happened in your life. There are some things that you are undergoing right now. There are some the, the song we just sung, new wine, crush it. When you, you get new wine, you got to crush the grapes. You got to mash the grapes. Lucille Ball does the best job of anybody. If you've not seen that episode, go look it up. But there's a crushing to get the juice, to get the newness. There's a crushing. There's some things that work in you. And God will use anything and everything at work in us to bring about what He's doing. And He says, here's what's happening. This work that is happening in you has not been done by your physical ability. It's been done by faith. Faith is doing this work in you. Faith is doing this work through you. And then interestingly enough, we all kind of know what faith is, but then I, I find out when I go to reading and, and, and doing word study on the definition of the word faith, I want to make sure I got it right and I understand it. And here's what it was. It wasn't having faith in God as a general concept that you believe that God is who He is. It wasn't that kind of faith. It wasn't faith to see miracles done. So it wasn't a healing faith. It wasn't a faith into daily routine. God, get me through this in faith. It was a specific faith. And it was this. Faith that is a reliance on Christ alone. So in other words, the work being done in me is done because of Christ and Christ alone. It is a reliance on Him. On Him. The next word <coughs> was, the phrase was, work produced by faith and your labor prompted by love. Labor here now gives what the definition of work didn't give. Labor here is actually dealing with the physical and these were all the words used to describe labor. Toil. Effort. Like heavy effort. Grief. Grief that comes with change, with loss. I'm not talking necessarily about grief regarding the death of someone, but just loss. And wearisome. Anybody in here ever felt a little weary. And he says, your toil, your effort, your grief, your wearisomeness that was prompted by love. I did this work for love. Quick example. I plant all these rows of corn I usually end up somewhere around 1,500 to 2,000 years of corn by the end of, by the middle of July. No, I don't have enough freezer space to put it up. And in fact, I plant it, I cultivate it, I put water hoses best I can to make sure that it gets what it needs, I fertilize it. And all summer long, I get up early or I'm down there late, usually on Saturdays, making sure that it's growing. And then when it comes time to pick it, I pick it. And I'll have all those years of corn throughout the time, and I'll begin calling people, and I... If it's a thousand years, I give away six or seven hundred years. Just give it away. Makes those little farmer markets mad. I'm 
not sell them. I just give it away. I cut the ends off, I blanched mine, I cut it off the cob, put it in a freezer bag, I do all that, I do all this hours and hours and hours of labor, toil and effort and wearisomeness for no other reason than love. That's not to pat me on the back, that's to say, I love growing it. I love watching it grow. I love what God does with the earth. I love that connection. And I also love sharing the harvest. The labor prompted by the love. No other reason. Why are you still doing this? Some people will tell me. And like, you guys, where are you you're getting old? My girls tell me, you're getting old. Why are you still doing this? I just, I can't not do it. I love it. That's what labor is there. He says, your labor prompted by love. Now, here's the thing. I love doing that, but the love here is not that kind of love. The love here is the actual love of Jesus working through you. Why you do what you do, how you serve in ministry, is it the love of Christ working through you? Because if it is, you know how I can tell it's the love of Christ working through you? Because you press on through your toil. You press on through your grief. You press on through your weariness. You press on through the frustration. You press on through, through the bitterness. You press on. You press on. You keep going. And you keep going not because <coughs> you have a gift, not because you love what you do because you do, but you press on because of the love of God in you. What He's done for me, what He's done in me, what He's done through me said, I won't stop, I won't quit, I won't give up, I'll continue to use what God's put in me. But if you're doing it for your own vain good, your frustration will only grow. Because what you're doing, you're doing it out of the wrong motive. Which means you're not getting the harvest you want. Because the harvest you want is about you. But the love of Christ always makes it about others. And then he says, and your endurance inspired by him. Endurance simply was this. When you persevere in all seasons, in all circumstances, you just keep pushing through. And then I love the definition of hope. The reason why I have labored and God's love works through me and I persevere is because I believe in the expectation of good to come from God. Amen. The good that comes from Christ. So, <clears throat> if I was to take all of the definitions and write them in a couple of statements that describe this church family, that describe the seven things I'm about to tell you about us celebrating hope. We've seen hope a lot. We witnessed hope, the very biblical hope that God gives. We witnessed it in this church, the, the miracles of it in this church, this year already, and it's only six months. <coughs> but before I tell you those seven things, if I was to take all these definitions and put them into a sentence form, here's how it would describe Piper Church. I'm going to read it slow because I want you to hear it said to you personally. Because if it's not about you, you need to begin making this your prayer. Here's the definition that's kind of written out. 
because of the love of Christ in you. The work done in you is by faith and reliance on Jesus in you. And for that reason, you persevere through your toil, through much effort, through wearisomeness, even grief. All because of your expectation of good. Amen. You want to know why Jesus said, on this I'll build my church, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Is that right there? Every time God's love changes a heart, every time the love of Christ works in you to change something about you, maybe to break an old mindset, maybe to bring a breakthrough into your life, maybe to heal something in you, maybe to bring revelation of the goodness of God in you. Whenever God's love does something in you or through you, this happens. And this is the reason why nothing man does will ever shut down the church of God. It's because the love of Christ in you the work done in you by faith, remember the term kind of faith, by reliance on Jesus, for that reason is why I persevere, you persevere through toil and effort and wearisomeness, even grief, all because I have an expectation of good that comes from the Father. Amen. It's poured out daily on your life and mine. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and this is why you and I can celebrate this morning. We can celebrate hope this morning. Because this is the focus. It's the intentionality. It's the awareness of God's promises that work in our lives daily. Daily. Yes, last Saturday I went down, I had a decent looking corn crop, even with less rain, my corn's not long like I wanted to be, it's kind of short this year. I didn't get enough water to it. And I went down on Monday, check it out, see what was ready to pick. <clears throat> Apparently some of it was more ready than I realized, according to the signs I saw. Apparently, a family of raccoons decided my corn was ready. And apparently, the dinner party was for after midnight, or I'd been down there looking coon meat. And they had decided to claw, shred about a third of my corn and eat it right on the cob, right on the stalk. Quite frustrated, Jonathan. All that work. And I thought, well, all I know is this. Either squirrels, deer, or raccoons, probably, are going to enjoy enough corn and they'll fatten them up between now and fall and maybe I'll catch on. <laughs> but even with my toil and what I lost. I was able to witness God's favor and expectation of good because it's still there. Even when we do all of that work and things don't go our way, church, I hope you're hearing me. Even when it doesn't come out like we wanted it to, it still shows that God is who God says He is, and He is faithful to His name and His promises throughout these situations. And He's been that way for us already the first six months of the year. <clears throat> Let me just share with you seven ways 
I'm just going to listen and talk a little bit about seven ways that we've seen God working hope in our church family. Hope. Now understand something. These are not things God has done for us. Nor are they things that He's done in spite of us. But these are things that are being done in us individually and through us as a church. And they're worth celebrating. You see, the, the truth of hope. Let me give you hope responses. There have been at least nine people who have received Christ that I'm aware of. There have been two that are baptized, six who wanted to join this church. As we're celebrating hope, there are names written in the book of life for heaven. We don't do what we do for anything else. That's enough. We launched some new things today, this, this year. We do these connect lunches just as a way to introduce new people who want to find a church family. We just want to introduce them to who the staff are, answer any questions that they may have, and share a meal with them. That's it. And so far, we've had 19 new attenders who have come to this church and who attended those lunches and who found out things that they wanted to find out about this church and are still here. We offer growth track. This is about hope growth. Hope is growing in this church family. And our growth track have had at least nine people who have gone through it. And let me just touch, touch something about growth track for you. Understand this about growth track. If you attend growth track, well, that tells me whether you like it or not. Whether this is good or bad to some of you. What it tells me is that you've chosen to take a significant step in, your, in the responsibility of your own spiritual growth. That you're not just waiting for it to happen, you're not just hoping it to happen, you're not just praying for it to happen, but that you have taken a significant step to help ensure your spiritual formation, your spiritual growth. There is nothing you should be more committed to than that. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. It's for me, it's for you, it's for all of us to be responsible to help grow <coughs> all that we can and mature in all the ways that we can to be able to withstand all of the attacks and the flaming arrows of the enemy. All the discouragements and disappointments in life. All of the bad news. All of the good news. To be able to walk in the ways of God's Word. Your spiritual growth. There is no priority greater and for us to do. Let me give you <clears throat> another one that I call hope faithfulness. I don't know if you know this or not, but if should the Lord tarry, should He not come back in the next few years, 2024 is the 100 year anniversary of this church. <clears throat> God has sought fit while many churches may have closed their doors, he has sought fit to keep Pikeville Church alive and relevant and involved in this community. Coming 2024 for 100 years. The people who have received Christ, the people who have grown up in this church, the people who have gone on and now are a part of a great cloud of witnesses praying and cheering us on to finish our race well. It'll be the 2024 will be the 100th year anniversary. And guess what else? I don't know if the people who were here at the time when we built this beautiful building, this facility, and bought this land, and had to sign off on that $12,000 a month house payment. I don't know. 
if they realize it or not when they sign off on it. But how ironic is it that in 2024, our 100 year anniversary is also the year of paying off the mortgage of this church. Yeah. In fact, we are <clears throat> right now the mortgage of this church that started out being 1.9 or 1. something million dollars back then. We are now at $222,000 from having the mortgage paid off. Amen. Estimated looks like about February of 2024. Paying off. What could we do with $12,000 a month for ministry? It's amazing. It's worth celebrating. And if Robbie Hennett wants to write a check today, yeah. we'll pay it off today, won't we, church? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Keith? <laughs> Sandy says, I'll take it from her money, but here's what he needs. <laughs> Absolutely. And listen. We're already gearing up to make 2024 something exciting and special and we're celebrating. Throughout the year, we will be doing some things that year. We're already gearing up. We're already putting things together. <clears throat> but there are some other things that have to be done to this church. There are what I call hope projects. There are things that we have to look at we have to we're replacing one right now ac unit in the prayer room and all down that hallway having to replace there were 14 units there are eight five ton units that are all 20 years old and old we're needing to replace them put them on a schedule to replace them every year one here one there other things that we're wanting to do to get ready for 2024. So I would just encourage you, if you want to financially give to some of those hope projects, those special projects, then follow this instruction. You designate your offering to special projects, not your time. Time belongs to God. You designate above your time. Hey, I want $10 a month to go to this. Or I want whatever to go to that. To go to those air conditioned units. To go to other projects that we're trying to do to build up. Let me tell you a sixth thing that's been happening in this church. It's extraordinary. I hope you're okay, but I'm not giving you some preaching whatever. I just wanted to be kind of like a state of the church dress six months into the year, let me know where we stand. And this is miraculous to me. We've not had an explosion of growth. We've not had a hundred new people start coming to church here. We've not had, a, it's just been slow, steady, new growth. But our church is healthy. Our church is strong. And let me give you an amazing, a staggering couple of figures. The sixth, number six is hope seed. And I want to talk to you about the financial giving of this church. It's solid. Now, the reason why that's important for you to know is all the square footage and all the land and twelve thousand dollars a month plus. $2,000 electric bill because of the heating and air and light and all the stuff that's done and such a small number of people small number of people in attendance, small number of people uh, in, that are givers but let me just tell you what God's done through you let me just tell you why we're still celebrating hope. Let me just tell you why. Why we know that if God should tarry, he's got a hundred year plan for this church. Is that the financial giving, this is, this is what was given up 
January to June of last year, 2021, <coughs> January to June of this year, excuse me, May, we haven't even done June yet. So it's through May. Am I correct, Connie? Through May. Five months. You have already contributed, tithe, or given a little over $23,000 more this five months than you did all of six months of last year. From January through June of last year. Is that right? January through May of last year. And January through May of this year, already $23,000 more in giving. Amen. Now, somebody told me I didn't need to share that because then people stopped giving. So let me just tell you this. Several years in a row now, because of our big house payment and all this land and everything, and so much fewer people here. Most years we come in with June and we're behind in our budget. We have to make it up the rest of the year. But this year already, what we proposed, in other words, your board got together and said, here's what we think we can bring in January or May of 2022. And then we look at the bottom line and say, here's what we actually did bring in. So while it's $23,000 more than last year, right now we're $2,600 ahead in what we designated to bring in already this year. That's right. Every positive is a good positive, Amen. right? Amen. When normally we come at this time of the year, we're behind financial. God is working in you and through you. Amen. You've been faithful in things. And because of a lot of the sound, listen, last year, you remember we had to spend $40,000 on two air conditioning units? The money was there in our checking account because of your faithfulness to give. Within four months, we had replenished that $40,000. Just that way. Doesn't mean I'm telling you that you need to stop. It ain't time to doggy paddle. Because number seven has happened. The seventh thing is what I call hope future. And over the course of the last several months, your church board and I have been in conversation with Pastor John. Many of you know we brought Pastor Jonathan on part-time. We brought him on off of a seed contribution that, that was given on behalf of James, Sauls, and Jay. And that was the seed. That was the future. And many of you know the way the Lord has been using Pastor Jonathan in, in our college days and in our middle school and high school phenomenal testimonies we sat down and began to have conversations and then when Jonathan and I sat down I went to the church board and we sat down and talked more here's what your church board said God has been working through faith this year, last year even in 2022 some of our best years have been the roughest years around us the last three years and we want to make a move to bring him on full time. And because of your faithfulness, because of what you've been doing, because of how you've been serving, I'm here to tell you today that as of July 1st, Pastor Jonathan is a full time youth minister here at Piper Church. And when I sat down with him and asked him about that, and we talked about it, he goes, you know, Pastor, my heart is to really get into these schools and really begin to make a difference in kids' lives in the schools. And on the scale that we've had, he's just not been able to do that. And so we wanted to do that. And that's his plan. That's his goal. That's his heart. Listen to me. Due to your giving faithfully, 
Do to your servant in ministry is faithful. Do to your trusting faithfully. Do to your living faithfully to God's Word. We've got all these reasons to celebrate. We've been stuck on nine people getting saved for a couple of weeks now. I'm tired of that. I've been talking about the Lord. Lord, we want to see more people saved. We want to see more people healed. We want to see more people baptized in the Spirit. Okay. And when I said that in prayer to getting my sermon together, I had finished. And suddenly he said, you're not finished. Go back to your scripture. So I went back to my scripture. And suddenly there were three words that I hadn't paid attention to. So let me read it again. This time I'm only going to highlight those three words. Because this is your challenge. This is for us. In light of the darkness that we live, I want you to know that the truth is power of the gospel is at work no matter how dark the darkness. Amen. Amen. The power to heal, save, transform lives, bring lost souls into the kingdom is at work. And here's his threefold promise that I didn't read, I didn't see it. But listen to it. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith. Your labor prompted by love. And your endurance inspired by hope. In our Lord Jesus Christ. And here's what I felt the Holy Spirit tell me. Mark, what it means to produce is what you did with the farm crop. It means to bring into existence something that wasn't there before. He's challenging us to continue the work of our faith and watch him bring into existence things you've not seen before. He says, Mark, your labor is prompted by love. Prompted simply means moved to action. Let your labor be moved by the action of the love of Christ in you. Let it be prompted. And then your endurance inspired by hope. What's another word for inspired? Then celebrate. Church, we've been positioned to become a hope-filled influence and impact on individuals and families and in our community. We are to purpose, hope. In other words, we're to live it and give it in every way we can. We're to bring it into existence. We're to be moved by the action of His love in us. And we're to celebrate as we watch God do it over and over and over again. We are living in the most difficult times ever. And yet we're living in the most glorious opportunity to be the vessel that the power of God uses to dispel darkness. I don't believe all of this is coincidence or accidental. And in each year of 2024, That's a hundred years that God's hand, and presence, and purpose has been on Pocket Church. 
We cannot give up. Amen. Our task is incomplete. All of those people gone on ahead of us, standing in the line ahead of us who have, who have labored and prayed and warred and faithfully stood. We're saying it's our time. Sam, it's your time, my time. It ain't quitting time. I want to see more people say, more people serving in ministry, more of our younger generation engaged in all kinds of roles around here, from prayer to evangelism to getting people into the family of God. Amen. It's all of our responsibility in every way that we can. spend their whole life trying to figure out how to be a part of something bigger than them. Because that's where we find meaning. Success. There is nothing bigger than being a part of God's family and helping bring other people into that. There's nothing bigger than myself than that, like that. No job, no money, no career, no hobbies. Nothing is big as being a part of that in any way you can, in every way you can. And then, God, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for all the ways that you've ministered to our lives. I ask that you continue to meet the needs of folks in this house. <clears throat> They will continue to live in trusting ways, in faithful ways, in serving ways, in giving ways. That they would do all of this as they grow in their love for you and that you mature and grow them in their, your love for them. Do this, we pray, that we may be found faithful in the last days. For it's in the name of Christ we ask this. Amen. Amen. It is a blessing to be able to be here on Sundays and worship with you. Real quick before you leave, if you are a guest, a first-time guest, a second-time guest, maybe a third-time guest, we might let you in there. Uh, we are going to have our Connect Lunch. It is right through those doors, the one that says emergency exit only. In this case, the food emergency, and we need to go eat. So if you are a guest and you would join us, even if this is your first time, we would love to have you. It is, uh, uh, we've got a ton of food, so please uh, stay with us. We look forward to talking to you, getting to know you. God have a blessed day.